married to Shiran. He's the father of two children. Yadidia was born and raised in the community of Atzmona in Gush Katif. And his family relocated to Halutza after the Israeli army and the Israeli government withdrew from the Gaza Strip in 2005, some 13 years ago. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to, I'm gonna to introduce to you and I'd like you to give a good welcome and a big welcome to Yadidia Harush. Thank you very much. Shalom. I am not so happy to be here, but I am happy to be here. It's a mixed feeling. I want to introduce myself and talk a few words about me. But um, I speak a lot um, here in the States, but today it's different because today um, it's uh, a little harder for me to talk. I assume you understand. My name is Edidia Harush. I was born and raised in the Gaza Strip. My parents were pioneers of Israel, came to Israel and moved and they lived in Sinai for a few years and then moved to Gaza after the peace agreement, just like Michal's family. And growing up in the Gaza Strip, you know, wasn't always easy. I grew up in a way that was just like a Saritz under the shell of the rockets, the shell of the terrorists and shootings, it was not easy. But we were happy to live in Gush Katif, in the Gaza Strip, because we really believe that we are there in, for a reason. And um, exactly seven years ago, 17 years ago, this Shabbat, this past Shabbat, was my Bar Mitzvah Shabbat. I'm sure you all know what it's like for a Bar Mitzvah boy when he goes up, how exciting it is. Our shul was beautiful, beautiful shul in Atzmona. And at three o'clock on Friday night, we woke up to very, very large explosions and shootings. We realized that three terrorists broke into one of the army bases that is right next to the community, were able to kill three soldiers and one of them escaped to the greenhouses of the community. I remember, sorry, I remember the, the explosions. We felt as if it was in our house. And all I could think about was my uncles and aunts, who we for weeks before were convinced that it's the safest place and we brought them in, in with uh, bulletproof buses. And at eight o'clock, they said everybody could go and everybody could release from the houses because we were under a lockdown for a long time. And here I am standing an hour later and, and reading the Torah. And it was a beautiful reading. And no one can really explain and understand the way we lived is, we call it emergency routine. It was always under emergency, but it's also routine. And we had to keep this life. And this is the childhood I had. And we were very happy to live in Gush Katif because we really believed that we were there for a good reason. But the Prime Minister of Israel and the government decided otherwise. And um, on August uh, 14, 2005, the disengagement happened. We lived in a beautiful new home and we had to get out and leave for the sake of peace. And we got out. We had the slight hope that maybe it will bring quiet to Israel forever, the effect that we live. It was a slight hope for a little bit, because right after Gilad Shalit was kidnapped and rockets and Michal's home became the front. And we got out and my house was destroyed and we had to leave 8,500 people, left the, ga the gates of Gush Katif. And we decided, despite everything that happened, we're choosing the positive. And we moved to an area, a brand new area. It's called Chalutza. It's in the desert, not far from Michal. And we started our life to build new communities in Eretz Israel, in the land of Israel. Believing that, no, we're here, we're gonna move on. Whatever happened, it's in the past, now we're looking forward. We're in a shul, we say um, that uh, when uh, Lot's wife, they were escaping from Sodom, 
And God tells them, the angel tells them, don't look back. If you look back, what happens? It turned into salt. And she looked back. We didn't want to look back. We only wanted to look forward. And we moved on. And we were there from day one. Jewish National Fund were our main partner from day one. And built beautiful homes, beautiful communities. I have two kids. My daughter, oldest daughter is Avigail. My younger one is Noah. And I feel like now that they are growing up, uh, as a father, you know, when I was a kid, to look at yourself and go through something, it's one thing, but to look at your children and they go through it, it's another. And one of the main, I think, one of the main things in this last escalation that we have had since March is the fires. Both Jordan and Doug spoke about it. You know, the fires that we have... And people don't understand. You read on the paper, a balloon landed in a, in, a, in a field, and it was burnt, right? Okay, so it's a balloon that landed in a field, and now it's burnt. So let me tell you about my friend Pinchas. Pinchas is a 50-year-old farmer. He's been farming for many, many years. He's married to Orit, and has a son, 19-year-old Suriel, a 15-year-old Judith, and a 12-year-old, 12 and a half-year-old, Yair. Pinchas is a farmer, and I don't know if you know, but farming in Israel is not so easy as it is, especially with the big drought we're going, we're going through. And he earns his living. He puts a lot of money, a lot of expenses, and he promises Yair to have a bar mitzvah. The bar mitzvah was supposed to take place in May, and they plan a big event. Everything is almost ready. Everything is reserved. But then on March, right before Pinchas is about to harvest his wheat, to sell, a week before, this innocent balloon that you read on the paper lands. It lands in the field and burns it completely. Pinchas doesn't know what to do. He calls, calls the fire department. Hello, fire department, I need help. My, my, my field is on fire. They say, oh, we're sorry, we're, we're, taking, we're taking just now, uh, we're taking care of another 15 fires going on at the moment. And are there any danger, life danger? No, it's just my, my wheat. It's, it's, my entire, it's my entire year of work. All my, all my tears and, 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 and sweat, everything is in this, is, everything is there. So we're sorry, if there is no danger, you'll be last on the, on the chart. We'll come to you in two days. And then he calls the, the security head and he said, can you come help me? My, my wheat field is on fire. And, the, and the, the security head comes with a small fire wagon. And by the time he comes, because he's already taking care of a few fires, and the fire wagon is not the newest, he's able to save about 5% of his, of his field. Now, the government is going to compensate him. They're going to compensate him for what, for what happened. But the customer in England who's supposed to get that wheat, he needs to feed people. He's going to move on to the next supplier, to the next grower. And what's going to happen next year when the land is already dead? And there's one story of Pinchas. Speaking about the balloons, I think what's, it hit me one time very, very hard. About two weeks ago, I was walking with my daughter Avigail, and um, we're, we're in Jerusalem in Mambila, and this guy selling balloons. My daughter loves balloons. She loves all the characters. I said, Avigail, you want, you want a balloon? I'll buy you a balloon. She said, no, I don't want a balloon. I said, why? I said, balloon is bad. Balloon explode. Balloon can kill us. And I want to tell you something. It is not easy for us. We have been going through a rough time, but we are strong. We're so strong and our spirit is so strong that even when we cry and even when we go through tough times, we know that we're going to stay and grow and this is our home and our communities are going to grow. And only last week, 10 families moved into Kerem Shalom and another five moved to the community of Shlomit and families are coming. We're in the middle of building a new park thanks to Jewish National Fund and community center. And we're building. We're Am Israel, and Am Israel high. And we're going to continue. That's all we know. 
That's what we know how to do. And being here with you warms up my heart. It's a message that I'm going to take back with me to the entire Gaza Envelope communities. We're not alone. We have thousands of people behind us, pushing us with their fingertips every single day. You are our partners. This is not a cliche. You are our partners. You give us strength. Thank you so much. Thank you.